Hello there guys, welcome to another Unreal Engine 4 video. Uh, in this one today we're going to be taking a look at some more general programming um, paradigms as opposed to something very specific in Unreal Engine 4. Um, but before I jump into that I wanted to point out this. This is the brand new Totally Unreal chat room. So my plan is to have a community on here where you guys can discuss game ideas, discuss tutorials, uh, discuss the projects you're working on. If you're trying to find someone to work with, you know, this might be a good place to start looking. Uh, if you've got a cool idea in mind and you want to find some teammates to help out with that. So I'll have a link to this Discord server down in the description below. Uh, but without further ado, let's jump into um, loops. So today's video is going to be on loops. We're going to be talking about um, the different types of loops, how they work, and, you know, what you would use them for. So I've, I've opened up a brand new first person template here. I've got nothing going on. Um, and I'm going to fire open the, uh, what, do you, what do you call this, the first person character template blueprint. So we'll fire this up and we'll take a look at what we can do with the loop inside here to change the way that, it, that this works. So we may cover, we may brush on some other programming paradigms too during this video, but at the same time I'm going to try and keep this mostly focused on loops. So over here you have the thing that fires the bullet at the end of the gun. So it, it might be possible for us to put this into a loop. So when we press the action key we fire three times maybe instead of instead of just once. So let's have a look at uh, for a for loop, for each loop. Uh, a for each loop is one type of loop. Actually this isn't the correct type of loop for what I want to do but I'll go over what a for each loop does. So a for each loop takes an array, which is basically just a list. We can create one now over in variables and we have to uh, hit this little button here and then drop it down to make it an array. So we'll have an array of integers. We'll call it um, number list. Sorry, that microphone might be a bit too close to my keyboard. I've, uh, I've shuffled my room around and everything's not where I want it. Um, so yeah. Sorry about that. So yeah, we have our thing over here. I'm just going to go ahead and rename that to, oh yeah, number list. There we go. So we'll plug number list in here. So now this is, so for each number inside number list, it's going to do the loop body. So let's, let's see if we can put some numbers in here. So we'll have number one, we'll have a number two, we'll have a number three. We'll have a number four and a number five. So this is just a list of the numbers one, two, three, four, and five. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a print string. And we're going to plug in the array element. Now the array element and the array index are different. And I can point that out to you now. This is talking a bit about arrays. But you see here on the left, this is the index. So um, lists in programming always start on zero. So even though the numbers want the number assigned to position zero is one. So I'm trying to think of the best way to explain this um, because they're very similar numbers. But yeah, you start at position zero. So like think of it as a building. You're on the ground floor. You're on the zeroth floor, and this floor has one room. You're on the first floor, and this floor has two rooms, or it could have five rooms. You know that that's the value that changes, but the floor that you're on doesn't actually change. So when we're talking about these loops here, we're going to take in the array and the loop body is what will be executed each time it goes around. So it's going to do it for each element in here. So there's five elements. So this will run five times and we'll print out five numbers. So we just need a way to trigger that. So let's just try and get a, a key here. Something I can press. Do you know, I really struggle to find the keys in Unreal Engine 4. All right, let's have P. So when I press P, you're going to go ahead and do this. So we'll compile that. We'll hit play up here. Whenever you're ready. And we'll hit P. And you see that it does 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. With 1 being the first one that it printed. Um, and that moving down the page. So that was quite simple. So, I mean, you can then change the loop body to do all sorts of interesting things. So what we're going to do now is I really shouldn't be using this type of loop. But I'm going to plug it into here. So when I press play now, it's going to fire five bullets because there are five elements in that array. Oops, I should mute that. So yeah, you see we have five there now shooting out and some of them go backwards because it's not really set up for this. But, you know, this is how I've used a loop to 
increase what I'm doing five times by uh, fivefold. So that's a for each loop that iterates through uh, the elements in an array that you pass in. The other types of loop we have in here is a for loop. Now for loops are the most common type of loop I think. Probably a, actually a while loop would be more common in Unreal Engine 4 but a for loop is what I use. Uh, I work as a C sharp developer and for loops are pretty common in when I'm working stuff out in a backend API. Um, so a for loop will take a first index, so maybe zero, and a last index of maybe 10. And for every number between these two numbers, it will go up. So what I can then do is I could say, I could do the same thing. So I'll take P, we'll get rid of this so it's not as confusing. And I'll put the loop body as the montage. And this time it's gonna do it 10 times. So we'll hit play and see how that goes. So you see now we've got 10 balls coming out. It might be a bit hard to see because they're going all over the place and stuff's going wrong and weird. Uh, but what we can do then is we can print a string out to just take a look at what exactly is going on. So what this is going to do is going to print the string of the index. So if the first index is 0, it'll print 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's have a look at that. And hit P. And there we go, from 0 to 10 up there on the left. I hope you can see that. It's quite hard to see, but yeah, it's there. It counts from 0 to 10. So that loops that around 10 times. So you're getting the gist of what the loops are doing here. They're taking a starting position, or they're, they're taking a, an amount to run by, and they're incrementing by 1 after every execution. So what we can do to demonstrate this is I'm going to make a new integer, not non-array, and we're going to call it number. Uh, number is going to have a value of 0. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to set that to number plus integer. So zero. So it's going to be number equals number plus 1. So it's going to go up by 1 every time. So we're going to do this 10 times. So we can see number starts at, uh, let's start it at 5. And let's also grab a print so we can see what's going on here. So what, 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 let me just talk you through this real quick. So I'm going to press P. For 10, 10 times, it's going to come and say set number to itself plus 1 and then print that value out. So we'll hit play again. And it would help if I moved that away. I'm going to hit P. And you see it goes from 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way up to whatever it was. And you can see actually it keeps incrementing by 10 every time I press it because there's nothing to reset that number. So every time I run the loop, it's going up by 10. So, infinite loops might seem like a good idea if you're quite new to programming. The idea that you can have this something do something infinitely. So, for example, let's say you wanted a box to spawn infinitely. Um, you might say, okay, what I will do is I will take a for loop and I will have my number be the last index. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to itself plus one every time. So that way it will never actually reach the end of the loop. Um, increment int. There we go. Uh, yeah, add one to the specified value and set. So I shouldn't need to. Ah, I haven't seen this increment int before. Um, so, so what we have here is this is going to run forever because the last index will start out as 5 and the loop body will run and then it'll be 6 when this is 1 and then it'll be 7 when this is 2 and then it'll be 8 when this is 3 and it'll be 9 when this is 4. You see, it will never ever catch it. So it can never ever reach the end of the loop. And what I'm expecting to see is that it doesn't actually run for us. Or that I press P and it freezes and we get an error. And this is infinite loop detected. So infinite loops are a really bad idea. You do not want an infinite loop. Um, if you're trying to do something over and over and over again, it's best to call an event such as um, get event. Oh wait, what is it? It's been a while since I've done this. Event tick. So this tick is draw is basically every frame. So every time you draw a new frame, so if you're at 60 frames a second, this will run 60 times in a second. So if you're needing to do something every frame, your event tick is what you want. You do not want to go ahead and make yourself a custom loop that's just going to run forever. Um, 
you could stop this loop running forever. You could have some condition checking. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip this. I'm going to move on to the final type of loop that we're going to cover in this video, which is the while loop. So the while loop takes a condition and basically does it forever. But I just said infinite loops were bad. Yes, they are. But this has a this has a way to exit the infinite loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a boolean value. And I'm going to name this um, equal. And you'll see why in a moment. So I have my, my equal here. So while it's false... Oh no, while, while equal is true, sorry, it will do the loop body. Afterwards it will hit completed. So what I want to do is I want to do a branch in here, which is an if statement, but I'll cover an if statement in a, in a similar type of video. Um, and if number is equal to 10. So what is it at the minute? It starts out at five. So when it's equal to 10, then equal will become false. I know that sounds a bit silly, so I'm actually going to rename that not equal. It's important that you use correct in um, variable names too, because when it comes to someone else trying to look through your program, um, it becomes confusing. So not equal. That's true because 5 does not equal 10. So on the false here, what we're going to do is we're going to do a number... Um, plus plus so we're going to get you and do a increment so what's going on here is when i hit p it's going to come into the loop it's going to say okay first of all is not equal true yeah because the number isn't equal to 10 so this is then going to check is the number equal to 10 if not it will add one to the number and it'll come back into the loop again because the condition still hasn't changed. So now it'll be 6 plus 1, 7 plus 1, 8 plus 1, 9 plus 1. And then when it is 10, this here will say, actually, yep, yeah, you're equal to 10. And it will set this to false. Then when it comes around to run the loop again, it will simply just go down the completed branch because it's it's finished. It's, it's time. So we'll hit that. Uh, what I want is uh, just something to let me know in the game that it's finished. So I'm just going to print hello when you've completed. So I'm going to press P, and you see I get hello up there. Um, and I'm wondering if I can run this side by side here, just to show you what's going on. So I'll hit P, and that really doesn't help. You see, let's just try again. It seems to be going so fast that it can't actually... Uh, actually, no, it's because the, inc the number never went down, so I had to rebuild that. So let's hit play again, and zoom out on here. And you'll see it goes around the upper path. So you're looking to see whether the execution path comes down here, first of all. So we'll hit P. And you see how it does them both? And now it will only do the top one. In fact, it won't even get through the loop because it's it's changed. The condition has now changed. So those are the three main types of loop. Um, typical use case scenarios for them. Let's take a look. Let's get one out. So a for loop, if you need to do something a certain amount of times, a for loop is uh, probably the one for you. If you know exactly how many times you want to do something. So for example, if you want to um, spawn three cubes, then you would call the same spawn method three times within this for loop. So that's, that's um, what I would probably use a for loop for. The other type of loop that we looked at was a for each loop. And a for each loop is given an array. So if you have a list of things, in fact, I used for each loops in my video where I showed saving and loading a game. So I saved everything into an array and I used a for each loop to iterate through that array. So if you have a list of something, a for each loop is the one for you. So if you've got a list of numbers, of objects, of... So if you have a list of all the bullets that you fired for some reason, let's say your game can fire bullets and you can make them explode later on, okay? Every single bullet you fire will be put into a, an array, is one way that you would do this. You would then plug that into your for each array, into your for each loop rather, and for each of them you would call blow up on the bullet and it will do an explosion at each single one of those bullets. That's a pretty cool mechanic, I might actually make a video about that. Um, but yeah, that's probably where I would use a for each loop. And the final loop, the one that we've already looked, just looked at, is the while loop. Now I'd use a while loop when you have a condition and you want something to run until the condition changes. So you want these monsters to spawn until the condition is that the boss is dead. 
So you would have boss dead as the uh, boolean value over here and you would have it change when the boss dies and that would then cancel the while loop. Um, so that was loops guys, it's a quick video on loops. Uh, I'll be covering a quick video on other general programming paradigms within Unreal Engine 4. Um, so this is way back to basics now, this is non nothing, no big long tutorials, this is some basic programming stuff just to help you understand what's going on in the background of the things that you're making. Um, as always guys, thank you very much for watching, don't forget to hit up the Discord server, chat to me in there, and uh, meet some other friends and let's see if we can get a bit of a community going on there. Thanks for watching guys, as always, I'll see you on the next video.